It has been 12 years since the Closing the Gap initiative was rolled out nationwide in an attempt to improve the educational engagement, experience and outcomes of Indigenous students. While trends indicate that the initiative has been successful to a certain extent, the gap between the performance of Indigenous and non-Indigenous students remains considerable. Further, the level of achievement and gap between achievement of non-Indigenous and Indigenous students appears perpetuated by location in that remote and very remote school performance remains lower than metro and provincial schools. During today's presentation, we'll provide a synthesis of triangulated data and recommend a strategic plan to be implemented on a continuum of ongoing research. So the plan will be implemented across Wheatbelt schools of Katanning, Narragin and Wajin as a first step in identifying its effectiveness in improving literacy and achievement of Year 7 and 9 Indigenous students. Analysis of NAPLAN and the 2020 Closing the Gap report were consulted for a national overview of student of Indigenous reading achievement across Year 7 and 9 students. This was compared to non-Indigenous students and as you can see, both data sets indicate one, that there has been an improvement between 2008 and 2018 for reading. However, two, the gap for Indigenous students remains around 20% lower or in terms of bands, two bands below their non-Indigenous counterparts. The closing report Closing the Gap report also highlighted particular concerns in WA with no target outcomes met for reading. These outcomes are validated with data from the Western Australia Department of Education as shown here. Again, we see a 30% difference in achievement levels for reading between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. To drew down one step further, a report from the 2015, in from 2015 by the WA Department of Education indicated a significant difference in reading achievement depending on location, with the remote and very remote locations performing at a lower level. An attempt was made to identify qualitative data which could inform the underlying why of reading abilities. Unfortunately, only one data set could be found. Conducted by the School Curriculum and Assessment Authority, a report collating survey responses of year two of Indigenous students indicated discomfort with literacy, in particular the context of tests and exams. This provides only a limited insight into the causes of lower reading achievement for Indigenous students across year seven and nine, and indicates the need for further research and data collation from a qualitative standpoint. This could be conducted by way of surveys, interviews and teacher observation, collated region-wide and analysed as part of a continuum of data, in, data to inform changes to instruction and teaching strategies. Analysis of the data clearly indicates a need to, while continuing with closing the gap initiatives, given it's a reasonable level of effectiveness, incorporate alternative strategies in the classroom to bridge the gap in reading and in reading achievement. Engaging with my school's website and school's annual reports, the results of NAPLAN, WO Department of Education and Closing the Debt were repl replicated in Wheatbelt School, Skitanning Senior High School, Narragin Senior High School and Wagen District High School. A high percentage of the student cohort across the three schools come from the lower, from the bottom of the quarter of the social ec education advantage scale, and each of the schools have a relatively high percentage of Indigenous students ranging from 17% to 25%. The implication here is that maybe relatively less funding available for extracurricular activities or specialty staff. One potential contributor to reading outcomes for Indigenous students is attendance, with waging recording 73% attendance in comparison to 83% for non-Indigenous students, and Narragin and Kintanning recording a disturbing 57% and below for Indigenous students. This suggests issues around student engagement, which could be the result of A, school and classroom strategies, and or B, contextual factors such as family, economics, or health. Finally, as discussed in the Rural and Remote Education Inquiry Briefing paper published by the Australian Human Rights Commission and echoed by the University of Melbourne paper, The Problem with Staffing in Australian Schools, rural and remote areas are notoriously difficult to staff and retain staff, which can have a direct impact on the quality and consistency of learning delivered within these communities. In employing the principle of data-driven decision-making, as seen above, in initially sourcing, triangulating, analysing, and synthesising data, it is the intention of this strategy to take steps to provide a more tailored approach to Indigenous students in relation to reading achievement. The hypothesised cause for the issue, this issue is lack of Indigenous student engagement with A, the school ecology, and B, the pedagogical approach. The initial vision, that being the goal that all parties can work toward, is reducing the gap between reading achievement of Year 7 and Year 9 Indigenous and non-Indigenous students by 5%. In order to accomplish this, we will implement strategies which we will discuss 
shortly. The implementation, implementation of these strategies will be included in an overarching plan, which will be providing a framework for educators and others to work to. In following a framework with clear, specific and measurable goals, the effectiveness of each aspect of the strategies will be monitored through data collection. Finally, by engaging with data-driven practice as part of the stakeholder layer duties, each school will develop a data culture in that education practices will be altered based on tangible evidence. At the onset of this process, it was decided that Eastern cycle of inquiry would be the most effective in a simple and continuum-based approach to identifying the issue, student engagement with ecology and pedagogy. Consider possible actions to improve the issue, monitor the effectiveness of, issue, of actions through assessment, survey and observation, then engage with research to identify impact of strategy. Finally, based on this data, making relevant changes to these actions. Each stage allows for reflection and improvement and ensures stakeholders remain focused on the overarching goal. All decisions are based on correlated data and stakeholder collaboration across three schools, ensuring an unbiased approach to the improvement of the learning experience. The strategy seeks to ensure all stakeholders from participants, parents and carers to teachers and administrators feel safe, respected and heard. Thus, from an ethical perspective, all parties will receive information files and consent forms, including an outline of the intentions and justification for alterations in teaching and learning methodologies. All stakeholders have the right to opt out of the experience and will be provided with mainstream educational opportunities. In the collection of data and amenity will be paramount through the incorporation of pseudonyms and confidentiality agreements. Furthermore, transparency will be incorporated in providing all, all stakeholders with summarised versions of data, implications of the data and explanation for any changes made in teaching methodologies based on that data. The issue, as indicated by the data, is that while Indigenous reading achievement has improved across time, there remains a striking gap in standards achieved between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. Based on this and taking into account the qualitative data as cited earlier, the plan is to, through a new strategy, increase Indigenous student engagement with the intention of improving reading and literacy achievement. The long-term goal here is not only to bridge the gap with the school system, but to contribute to bridging that gap in terms of access to post-schooling education opportunities, expansion of employment prospects, and reducing the disparity of socioeconomic status based on ethnicity. Before these strategies can be agreed upon, it is the recommendation of this party that further qualitative data be ascertained from individual schools to better understand underlying factors in performance, be it engagement, access to study, family or economic issues or otherwise. Thereafter, recommended strategies are threefold. First, research suggests that the integrating the eight ways of learning allows for Indigenous students to better access curricula through traditional methodologies that are better aligned with their historic culture. Interlinking required understanding with ways of learning beyond the classroom environment, such as kinesthetic, authentic or experiential activities, and these being linked to tradition and belonging, may result in greater engagement and performance. To implement this, it is essential that elders from the local Indigenous community be engaged and consulted with. Second is engaging the 2018 government initiative to increase the number of Indigenous teachers. For Indigenous students, is it not likely to improve the sense of belonging in the community within a school by having authority figures similar to themselves? This aligns with the data from earlier mentioned surveys of Year 12 students in that they felt a lack of community and sense of belonging in the school environment. Having now addressed ecology and pedagogy, it is recommended that the schools liaise with the Indigenous Reading Project and incorporate their strategies to address literacy and reading achievement specifically. Finally, based on the qualitative data yet to be obtained, there may be a need for provisions of food, transportation, attire or other forms of transport which may be incorporated into the overall strategy. In summary, each school will be required to embrace the eight ways principles of teaching their Indigenous cohort, engage with English or house teacher from an Indigenous background, and implement literacy strategies as recommended by the Indigenous Reading Project. Implementation of the strategy likely to take six months, with data collation, collection through surveys, interviews, formative assessment and teacher observation being conducted on a monthly basis. Every two months, said data will be collated and compared across three schools, at which time, through collaboration, modifications will be made to further improve the outcomes of the strategy. The 5% reduction in the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous students is hoped to be reached over an 18-month period, including preparation. We look forward to your thoughts on this strategy.